In preparation for installing the camshaft, I'm going to uh, put some grease on the journals where the camshaft rides in the head. Now I install the camshaft to make sure I get some grease on the lobes and also on the parts of the journal that haven't gotten grease already. And install the camshaft with both lobes here and here facing down like so. At this point, if you haven't already done so, you would install your dowel pins that go around the studs here. Uh, the dowel pins are actually still on this half of the uh, camshaft retainer, so I'm going to just leave them there and put the whole assembly on. Now before you install this, if you haven't taken it apart and inspected it, you want to at least take a quick look and see and make sure that you don't have excessive play uh, for these rockers. And these are pretty good. They're nice and tight. I don't feel any sloppiness or excessive clearance where they ride on the shafts. You can actually take the shafts out to inspect them. Uh, I didn't do that in this case. And it's important to note that if you did take them out, you're going to make sure you get them in the right position because on the uh, intake side, the one on the intake side actually has a slot in it. That I don't know if you can see it down in there, but that slot actually corresponds with right here with this bolt with a stud where this stud sticks up through there so if you um, get them mixed up or you put them in the wrong way you're not going to be able to uh, get this on to the studs okay now I've got this on and uh, the other way that you can tell that you've uh, got this correct uh, in position in my case I actually marked on the top here I put a, a big capital I, I scratched into the top here so I knew that this was the side that faced the intake. But the other giveaway is that if you've got it, so you've got the uh, flywheel on this side of the, if you're on this side of the engine with the flywheel, you want to be looking at it. You shouldn't be able to see those holes uh, where those two pins go in that uh, these pivot on. So that's the other dead giveaway. Now I'm going to install the washers and nuts and torque them down in a crisscross pattern down to the factory specs. All right, uh, I just had checked and I hadn't had it fully seated. It can be a little finicky. I use a uh, rubber, small rubber mallet to just tap down on it to get it to fully seat. Now I know it's fully seated because these do not want to just flop around and wiggle loose. So now I can put on the uh, four washers and the nuts and tighten them down to the spec, which is uh, 20 newton meters or 14 foot pounds. All right, I've got these torqued down. Uh, that's to uh, 14 foot pounds, which is uh, 168 inch pounds. That's pretty critical because you're not just, obviously, you're not just holding this down. This is also what you're uh, tightening down your your cylinder head uh, and squeezing that cylinder head gasket down to. So that's why you slowly, uh, basically, doing a crisscross pattern. You keep uh, increasing the uh, tension until you get to the final setting of 168 inch pounds. And now I'm going to uh, torque this uh, bolt right here, which I had tightened before, but not up to spec. Well, this is interesting. I just had to go and check the whole manual because I wanted to make sure I wasn't uh, missing something here. But uh, I remember where it said to install this cylinder head bolt right here, but it said not to tighten it at this time. And then it goes on and basically says, you know, install a camshaft, install this torque this down and everything and then it moves on and moves on to other things it starts getting to the point where you're covering this up and wrapping everything up it never goes back and reminds you to torque this down so not only that but the torque specs for this particular specific bolt I can't find those either so I've got to just torque this based on the size of the bolt for with the generic torque values in the manual but that seems almost like a typo to me that if you're doing this by the book uh, there's a good possibility you might forget that you left this loose, which would not be good. So I torqued this to 108 inch pounds, which is, uh, what is it? That's uh, 12 Newton meters or 9 foot pounds. Now I'm going to install the little plate that goes over this uh, cam tensioner and the little bolt that goes in there, but I'm not going to uh, tighten it down yet because I've got to make sure that that's in the loose position. All right, so the uh, proper position for this camshaft tensioner at this point, when we're getting ready to install the camshaft chain, or the cam chain, is for this punch mark to be at 12 o'clock facing straight up. 
That's the released or no tension position, according to the manual. Now I'm ready to statically valve time uh, the engine and uh, install the camshaft sprocket. So what I need to do is I need to rotate my flywheel. Um, I'm going to have to use both hands here because I've got to hold up the chain so that I can get the flywheel so that the T mark on the flywheel, the line with the T next to it is lined up with this little metal triangle right here. All right, so you can see right here, here's the mark and there's the T right next to it. Might be kind of hard to see. Not to be confused with the next mark over which has an F next to it and then you've got two other marks over here. So this is the mark we're dealing with. This we want lined up with that triangle. Um, of course, it doesn't want to stay there. That's okay though, we're right in the ballpark. Now the trick is I've got my uh, two lobes facing down on the cam. I want these two bolt holes to be parallel to this surface right here. So I need to rotate that just a smidge. And then I've got to get this gear in place with this round circle that's stamped into the gear facing up. And I'm going to put the camera down and do that. Okay, I've got it statically timed. I've got my uh, mark with the T next to it is right in line with the little pointer. And if you look at my camshaft gear, you'll notice that if we drew an imaginary line straight through the two center lines and the center axis of the cam gear, that line would be parallel with the top surface here of the cylinder or um, cylinder head. And the bolt holes aren't lining up, but I can just put a small screwdriver in there and tweak them a little bit to get the camshaft to rotate over so that I can get the camshaft bolts in, which is what I'm going to do now. Well, how do you like them apples? It's almost impossible to get the bolts in when it's in this position because the uh, they don't want to clear this edge right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the uh, crankshaft clockwise just a little bit to bring this hole up. And then I'm also going to kind of just coax the camshaft along with it as I do that just enough so that I can get the bolt in. And uh, of course, I can't do it too far because then I'm going to be starting to fight the tension of the, uh, the two valve springs. Right there will do it. I actually ended up having to rotate it just a little bit more. But now that I've got one of the bolts in there, I can rotate this back. Put this back on my T-mark. And double check and make sure I've still got good. Yep, this is that this little circle that's stamped in here is at 12 o'clock and these two bolt holes are still pretty much in line with the top of the cylinder head surface right here. So now I can uh, rotate it back the other way here and install the other bolt. Now I'm going to torque these bolts down that hold the camshaft sprocket in place and they're also torqued to 12 newton meters or 9 foot pounds which I think was 108 inch pounds if I recall correctly. Now it's time to release this uh, adjustment here, the um, lock nut and adjusting bolt. And what happens is when I unloosen this, the cam adjuster, which I had pushed down and then set this to keep it uh, pushing against the spring in the loosened position, what's going to happen is when I loosen this, that spring is going to cause that rod to move up and that's going to automatically set my uh, adjustment for that. And then after I adjust it, I need to tighten that lock nut back up to the specified torque, which is 12 newton meters or 9 foot pounds or 108 inch pounds. All right, so let's see if we can hear that snap up. Yeah. Didn't hear anything. And it actually seemed like it was kind of tight for me to uh, get this in. So I'm wondering whether or not that had slipped up out of position on me at some point during the night uh, when I had last worked on it and set it because that didn't seem to come up at all and like I said the tension on that chain already seemed a little tight when I was trying to get that sprocket into place it was kind of fighting me yeah apparently that's what happened I took this all the way out and I shined the light down in here and just for the heck of it and I can actually see the little telltale mark that's on the metal rod from where it had originally been uh, tightened down. 
now for the first time in a while I can actually rotate this crankshaft uh, 360 degrees because I've I no longer have to deal with the uh, safety wire that I had on there to keep the uh, chain from falling down into the crankcase so I'll just give it a couple of revolutions around and make sure everything looks like it's moving the way it should and no binding or strange noises from the chain that seems good so far so good all right now Time to set the valve clearance.